So that's how you make polyethylene. You have some sort of R initiator and it goes after a C2H4 and eventually you get RCCH H H H I put the parentheses around the middle to say this happens a bunch of times and it ends in R right so an R a chain of what used to be ethylene molecules and then an R to cap it but the bottom line is you can make all sorts of different polyethylenes in fact, there are two different types of polyethylenes that you even see in your uh, everyday lives. So if you uh, just go take a look at some plastic items in your kitchen and you look at the recycling symbols on them, you'll see that some of them have symbols with a 2 in the middle, a recycling symbol with a 2 in the middle, and some of them have a recycling symbol with a 4 in the middle. Those are both polyethylenes. PE is the uh, abbreviation for the plastic polyethylene. The difference is between whether they are HD, high density, or LD, low density polyethylenes. And where that comes in in the molecular structure, let's go ahead and erase this a little bit here, is whether the chains themselves are straight, right? HDPE have straight chains. All of those polyethylenes line up like train cars, right? They end up going out in one direction only. So they're straight and they're unidirectional. LDPE, on the other hand, right? who's to say that you can't just form branches at all sorts of different locations on the molecule? LDPE, low-density polyethylene, is branched. It's multi-directional. And think back to what you know about density, right? Density tells you something about how much space an object takes up based on its mass, right? Density equals mass over volume. And the thing is that branched structures, like low-density polyethylene, take up a whole lot more space, don't they? If I have to get a whole bunch of branches in one space, it's going to be a lot harder than lining up a bunch of straight lines. If you think about it, right, if you were to cut up a tree, normally what you do after you get the branches off is you try to cut all of it into sticks, just straight sticks. You don't want the sticks branching out all over the place because they're harder to stack and they're harder to deal with. A straight molecule like HDPD, HDPE, high density polyethylene, has these really long straight chains and it's like stacking a whole bunch of planks on top of each other. Low density polyethylene, LDPE, is like stacking a whole bunch of uncut branches on top of one another. Low density polyethylene takes up a lot more space and so it has a lower density. And that actually changes the applications it gets used for. HDPE has kind of a crystalline structure to it. It's rigid. LDP is non-crystalline and it's non-rigid. LDPE is what gets used in your plastic sacks at the grocery store or your squeezy mustard bottles or even some CD cases that crack very easily. On the other hand, high density polyethylene is what we make milk jugs out of or uh, rigid bottles, right? If you want a bottle that can withstand getting dropped and will probably be okay, if you want a bottle that's very rigid, you're going with HDPE, not LDPE. Again, they're the same molecule. These are both polyethylene. They're both made of polyethylene stretching out into the distance. It's the way those ethylenes are arranged that make a big difference, and that's huge for polymers. Again, what does intermolecular force have to do with polymer properties, right? So these ethylene molecules, we're just going to go ahead and chain out a whole bunch of these. H, 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 H. H, 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 H. Can you see that I've put in one, two ethylene monomers right now? Let's put in one more for good measure. So there's a C and a C. H, 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 H. And we'll put our R caps on the end, right? Take a look at that molecule very quickly. We need to think back to chapter 5 when we talk about polar molecules versus nonpolar molecules and how polar molecules had lone pairs of electrons or oxygens which have lone pairs of electrons. Things like sulfurs, right? This molecule, polyethylene, is made up entirely of carbons and hydrogens. Those R's, those radical initiators, we're not going to really care about them right now. Let's just look at the polyethylene. This is a nonpolar polymer. 
And if we think back to our like dissolves like schematic, polyethylene is not going to be very fond of water. And so water can hydrogen bond with itself or with other things that like it. It can interact via what are called polar-polar interactions with itself or with other things like it. It can't do that with things like polyethylene. There's an entirely different force at work here. And polyethylene chains attract one another via what are called dispersion forces. That's the mode of attraction between polymeric chains or between other big nonpolar molecules. So not just polymers, but plenty of others. And those dispersion forces, you can actually kind of see them at work. You can see what happens when you disrupt them because um, what you're doing is forcing the chains to align in a way that they might not like. Have you ever just stretched plastic wrap or a plastic bag and just seen what happened that eventually it kind of gets to this point where it gets really taut and really flat? That's the point where you've done what's called necking to the plastic. And you've forced all of those chains to snap together in a really uh, stacked way. They wouldn't, they'd rather prefer to sit like spaghetti so that they can attract each other better with dispersion. However, when you neck it, when you stretch it like that, you force them to go out and it's not quite as happy of a thing. This is all related to intermolecular forces though. So we've got the big six here. These are the six polymers that uh, get recycled the most often and they're the ones that you're going to find have recycling symbols on them if you start looking at your different plastics in your house. So let's look at particularly the first five right now. Remember that polyethyl or polyethylene comes from ethylene and ethylene looks like this or like this if you prefer the smaller uh, version in the table. That's polyethylene and there are two versions of polyethylene, right? Those are two of our big six are the two different types of polyethylenes. Let's look at number three now. Let's look at polyvinyl chloride. Does it make sense that polyvinyl chloride is basically the same as polyethylene in terms of structure, right? PVC still has a chemical double bond between carbons. It's got hydrogens, it's got hydrogens, and it's got one chlorine. It differs by one atom. The monomer is very close though. What about styrene? Let's take a look at styrene here. Isn't that pretty similar too? It's just got a difference of this extra benzene group. We'll talk about what that group is in our next lecture. And what about propylene? Same sort of thing, right? Carbon-carbon double bond, three hydrogens, and something else. These are all, so one through five, and actually it's four, two, three, six, five. I'm not sure how they picked their uh, numbering system for recycling, but unfortunately that is what it is. All of these guys, one through five on this list, are addition polymers. Every last one of these, everything but the one on the bottom, PET, needs that R radical to get started. And it's the same sort of thing. R goes after the monomer, leaves an leftover electron, the leftover electron goes after another monomer, and over and over and over until you make your polymers. They're all addition polymers. I want you to be able to recognize whether a monomer is an addition polymer or not. And the way you can tell that it's an addition polymer is by looking for that nice double bond in the middle of the molecule. If you see carbon, double bond carbon, H, 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 something, that's how you're going to know it's an addition polymer. I want you to be able to recognize that. Now let's look at this last one down here. Polyethylene terphthalate or terephthalate, right? There's two words for that. You call it P-E-T-E -E or PET. And you notice how in the monomer category, PET has two monomers. PET is a copolymer. PET has two things going on at once, two different monomers. It is also not an addition polymer. We'll talk about what it actually is in the next lecture, but I do want you to know that it's not. Right? There are five of the big six that are addition polymers, and they're very closely related to polyethylene, and then there's this one that is not. So there's variations in the monomers that govern what kind of plastic you get, right? You can get PVC, you can get polyethylene, you can get PET. If you change the monomer, there's all those options. There's also manufacturing variations that change what you get, 
right? We already talked about this a little bit with uh, HDPE versus LDPE, where that was depending on whether the molecule itself was straight or branched. This is actually a change in how we uh, manufacture the molecules. You can have the exact same polystyrene polymer and process it in two different ways and get two very different things. On the left here, we've got foam polystyrene, your styrofoam cups that you're used to. And the way that's done is you start with your polymer uh, solution. And what you do is you put uh, some sort of blowing agent. Uh, they used to use chlorofluorocarbons for this, but now they use uh, pentanes, for example. What the blowing agent does is you heat it up a lot, and it releases a gas, and it makes these gas bubbles. And as it releases that gas, it forces the polymer to uh, expand into whatever size mold you want to put it into. And that's how you get your foam polystyrenes. And they're lighter, they're less dense, they're, they've got that kind of bubbly quality to them. Same stuff though, polystyrene, if I don't put a blowing agent into it and I just uh, mold it right away, that's where I get crystal polystyrene from. Right? So there are a whole bunch of ways to get different polymers, or different um, products out of the same general polymer just based off of how I manufacture them. Another thing that changes the properties of the polymer you get is actually the way the monomers themselves are arranged. If we think back to the PVC monomer, it was C, C, three hydrogens, hydrogens, and a chlorine, right? This is the PVC monomer. And it makes sense, if you look at this, to think that the molecule looks different on one side than the other, right? One side has two hydrogens, and the other side has a hydrogen and a chlorine. And the arrangement itself actually doesn't matter to the molecule when it's making polymers. It could, in theory, arrange itself so that the molecules line up the same way, right? We have molecule one, molecule two, three, right? This is the same way every time. And this is what we call the head-to-tail arrangement. The head of every single molecule every monomer is in the same place every time. There's another option, right? They could face each other. We could have head-to-head, -head, right? So now this is the head of the molecule and these are the tails. Right, there's our monomers. These are same way every time. So same orientation. You can make a polymer like that. You just have to control exactly how it's going to happen. On the other hand, what PVC is going to prefer to do is what's called the random arrangement. Since the molecule doesn't much care what order it is, it just kind of goes and attacks randomly, and you get some that are head-to-head, -head, some that are tail-to-tail. -tail. It doesn't matter. Those three polymers are all different in properties. The head-to-tail arrangement way up top is the most rigid one, and that's what gets used in your credit cards, for example. The random one is a little bit less rigid. Those things are things that you have to think about and things that manufacturers and um, uh, workers in the industry really think about when they're making their polymer. How am I going to get exactly what I want and with exactly the properties that I need?